Hi everybody. I am at Fair Lamore's office. I promised myself and you guys um, that I will make FAQ videos because you guys have been asking me so much questions. Lately, a lot of the questions have been about um, entrepreneurship. Like, um, I have never been, hi Landon, I've never been um, the type of person who did not answer any questions about anybody that wants to start their business. Um, that is so big to me. Go sit down. I'm dancing. Go sit next to Honesty. Uh-uh, uh, sit on the floor. Cause you're gonna wake the little baby up. I just put the baby down. We don't want to wake him up. Anyways, I always preach that there's so much money out here to be made. Like, your friend can have a hair business, you can have a hair business, a lady down the street can have a hair business, and y'all all can have $200 million in your bank account. Like, there's so much money. There's no reason to stop anybody's money. So, if I've learned something and if I found out something, then I'm going to share it with you immediately. Like, one of my homegirls, um, Iman, she comes in here often. You know, she helps me out with my business and she's starting her own business. So I'm like, okay, girl, like I get this from Amazon. I get this from this place. I, I do like any tips that nobody taught me. Why do I have to, why do I want you to bump your head first and, um, and struggle before making it like i'm not gonna put anybody in that predicament even if i struggle first like that's just not gonna happen so with all of that being said um i'm gonna write down a few questions that i get often and i'm going to come back to you with the answers so let's see All right, so I have compiled a list of some questions and later on I'll probably do a part two and get some more questions um, from friends, families, maybe my friends that um, come by and uh, get some help from me. But just things that off the top of my head and just some questions that I've seen people ask me online. I'm like, okay, let me just go ahead and get that out the way. So. I should have probably put this in a particular order so that it uh, makes sense. But let me see. Entrepreneurship 101. The truth about entrepreneurship is what we're going to call this video. Okay. One of the questions that I get is how many hours do you work a day? Or how many hours should you work a day as an entrepreneur? So that um goes into it's based on how much time you have on your hands i typically have uh juggle my time between my children their online school now thanks to covid um my businesses because i have multiple i have a sip and paint business um which is tipsy topics and textures i'm planning a wedding and i'm running feeling more so I, oh, and I'm running my dad's publishing company. Don't ask, so much stuff. So I um, typically try to divide my time equally, though it's hard, but I also let my business dictate to me what it needs. So if Fair Lamore has 100 orders to fulfill and Tipsy Topics only has five, I'm going to dedicate more time to Tipsy Topics than Fair Lamore um, for the day. And um, so that's typically how I figure out how many hours I should work. As an entrepreneur, you have no set hours. You work twice as much as you work a regular job because your business is your baby and you put more effort into it, more time into it. Listen, I'm juggling it with my kids and I put my kids to work as well. My kids make uh, set up the boxes with me. They put the shredded paper inside the, um, the boxes. They crinkle up shredded paper that one order that I ordered it came with the crinkle paper straight not crinkled it was a mess but anybody who's ever worked with me knows that I don't waste money ever 
ever, ever, ever. They always ask me, they like, Teak, are you gonna tell your employ employees um, to or put a big sign up like at your office that says, don't throw anything away without asking the boss lady? Yes, because I save everything. I'm a low key hoarder because you never know when you're gonna need something for your business or reuse it or whatever. But anyways, I don't about that. Back to the main question at hand. You want to let your business dictate to you what it needs. You know how much time you put in. If you're not making money that week, you know you need to put some more time and it's not based on orders. If you're not making money that week, you better get on that computer, you better start marketing, you better figure out a way to make more money for the following week. All right. Another question that I have is, should I quit my job? My business is doing good for me. Should I quit my job? That is the million dollar question. Have you made a million dollars yet? No, don't quit your job. Okay, this is hard to answer because I won't necessarily say don't quit your job because I also feel like the more time you have, the more time you can put into your business. However, when you have responsibilities like me, I have three children. So I personally would keep every source of income that I have going. If I have a job and I have multiple other businesses, give me just a moment, okay? I'm going to juggle every single thing because I don't turn down money, period. And so I have a million dollars in my account, I'm not turning down money, it's just not happening. So, no, I don't tell people to quit their job. Ever. I mean, it's based on you. That goes into the first question. Let your business dictate to you what it needs. If it needs more time from you and it's making enough money and it's doubling what your job pays you, then yeah, all right, okay, cool. You stated your case. That's like you having two jobs now. Okay, you got two incomes. It's paying you double what your job pays you. Cool, because eventually it may pay you more. But this entrepreneurship journey is no joke because with some businesses, you have a peak season, you have a, a season that is um, kind of on the lower end. So you have to make sure that you are saving for the lower um, sale days. If you have um, six figure sale days one day, and then you have four figure sale days the next day, you need to, you know, well not the next, I wouldn't say day, I would say months. So if you have six figure sales, um, for three months and in the following three months you have uh, four figure sales You definitely want to make sure that it's balancing out you want to save you don't want to boil out because if you boil out You're not going to have no money for you know the four figure sales months So you know just play around with it before you quit your job kind of get a gist of what your business is doing Because you want to know when the the low months and the high months are going to come if I, if I say okay quit your job right now and you just started you wouldn't even know how your business fluctuates keep your job boo but you know also if it's paying you more than what your job makes and you need more time to put into your business then go ahead you have to make that decision that's a tough one but that's for you to make question number three uh how do you market i market on everything listen the truth about marketing is the more people see it, the more they're going to want it. They don't care what it is. It's like a repetition thing. Have you seen that movie Focus by, uh, and Will Smith starred in it? I think it was Focus. But anyways, what happened in the movie towards the end was they, he was a gambler and he kept betting on a football game. And he, Landy, be quiet, baby. I'm talking. He was betting on a football game and he continued to place the number 55 in front of the person that he was betting against so that the person would choose the number 55 in the end. But he kept putting it everywhere, his hotel room, his locker, and wherever, just everywhere he see it. He kept saying, hearing 55, seeing it, hearing it everywhere. And towards the end, he chose the number 55 because he kept seeing it. As much as people keep seeing your products or your service that you have to offer, they're gonna want it. They keep seeing it, they're gonna want it. They're gonna wanna do it, they're gonna wanna come to your event, they keep seeing it. They're gonna see people having so much fun. Some people like to try it out, AKA look at somebody else, try it out, and then they'll do it. 
So keep putting it in people's faces. One of my businesses, Phil Lamore has more followers on Instagram than they do on um, Facebook. But I'm gonna continue to post on Facebook, I'm not gonna stop. I'm gonna continue to run ads on Facebook, I'm not gonna stop because my little bit of followers are gonna see it. Somebody's gonna eventually share it. The best thing that we have right now with social media because it's free. Social media is free. When you put money into it, yes, you get money back, but it's a gamble. It's a big gamble. So what I wanna say is um, use every platform uh, to market. Use every single platform to market your business. Um, Tipsy Topics has more followers on Facebook than they do on Instagram because I it's a service-based business where I host events. So I create a lot of event pages and that's how I get followers from there. They share my events, people wanna come, they're interested, voila. So you just gotta stay active. Staying active on social media is a big thing and it's a big thing for me because sometimes I do and then sometimes I don't. Sometimes I slack on it, but I have so many people that hold me accountable. Like Khadija, she's like, come, come on girl, when are you gonna do another video? Because, you know, the world is waiting. You can't start something and then stop, so. Marketing is the key. People that make money are marketing gurus. So, yes, that's a good question. And I think I gave a good answer. Um, I'm probably gonna do like two more of these so that they're not so long. One that I got today, actually. So, one of my influencers, Jada. Um, Jada is little baby's girlfriend. Um, and also the mother of his child. My, that's my son, um, Mace, the little baby's uh, favorite artist, little baby. He's a trap baby. Don't know why. But um, it's the only thing that puts him to sleep. But Jada is one of my social media influencers for Fear Lamore. She does an amazing job when she posts Fear Lamore. She's really personable and she, you know, she gets the job done. Um, now, should you pay for a promotion? I pay for promotion on numerous occasions. Is it worth it? Um, I say yes for the most part. The people, the question that people ask me up front is, do you get your money back right away? Right away, I honestly don't think you get all your money back right away because I feel like with anything, even with starting a business, even if you never pay for promotion, it's a gamble. Let's say you are running an ad and not paying an uh, influencer for a promotion. If you're running a Facebook ad for an event, like Tipsy Topics and Textures, we're running a sip and paint event. People are gonna keep seeing it. I'm paying $25 ads, a $50 ad, $75 ad. I'm running it up, I'm running it up, but I'm paying for it, I'm paying for it, and people keep seeing it. They're not gonna click on it and they're not gonna buy it the first time they see it. They have to keep seeing it, just like I said in the previous uh, question. So don't expect to get your money back initially because somebody, an uh, influencer posted it and they said buy it. it. It doesn't work like that. My goal, every time I pay one of my influencers, I initially honestly prepare to not make any money from the sale. I prepare to get a lot of followers because I feel like people want to see what you're about before they purchase. So you have to show them what you're about, you know? You don't just, it's like, I'm an online business. I'm, e I'm an e-commerce business with Feeling More. So if there's so many other businesses that have products like mine, like Bed Bath & Beyond, no, I'm sorry, like Bath & Body Works, where you can walk right inside their store and smell it and see it and feel it and take, like, I don't offer that where you can come. I mean, if you're in Atlanta and you wanna say, hey, I wanna try something, okay, whatever. But a lot of my customers that purchase, they all over the United States. I have some, some people purchase in Canada. So they're gonna want to know what it's like. So it helps that influencers are sharing what it's like, but they have to, it, has, it takes a while to convince somebody. They have to continue to see it, continue over and over and over again to see it. So, so I would say pretty much, don't um, don't get discouraged if you don't make your money back initially. If you do decide to pay an influencer, but it is a big gamble, do not use your last to pay an influencer because you may be asked out.
honestly truly that's the honest answer i can get you don't want to use your bill money to pay an influencer give me one second babe you don't want to use your bill money to pay an influencer because you're not going to be able to take care of all your other stuff expect to get followers expect to get future sales not current sales all the time future sales i might end there but i have some more questions but all right, before I end there, I'm gonna say just a word of advice is just to continue to try. Entrepreneurship is not for quitters ever. You cannot get mad if you start, if you make something and it doesn't come out the way that you want it. Um, like a product, I've made so many sample products. I've tried so many formulas in order to get the perfect formulas for what I have. So just don't give up, keep trying, keep knocking at them doors. Had somebody hit me up like, girl, I'm trying to pay one of your influencers. Like, what's going on? I haven't heard back. Keep knocking because everybody, especially influencers, they're busy. They get a lot of messages and yours may have gotten lost. Keep knocking. Keep knocking. Keep trying. Don't give up. And remember, there is money out here for everybody. Don't withhold information. It's, it's not even worth it. Like, you don't want to see nobody else win. Like... Me and my three kids can't win? You mean to tell me me and my three kids can't win? No. So if I come to you for advice, I would expect to get some advice. I, I would feel like, dang, she don't want me to feed my kids. So, and then vice versa. You come to me for advice, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what your situation is, but I'm make sure I give it to you because if it can help you, we, it's, we all getting money out here. We all getting money out here. It's enough for us. So I got you, stay blessed. Send the questions in. We're going to figure this out together. Um, I have a, a few years under my belt. Tipsy Topics, I started in 2016. We're in 2020, so four years with Tipsy Topics. And Feeling More, I started when Mace was in the belly. Mace is, how old is Mace? Mace is seven months now. He'll be eight months. So, uh, for a while now. I, I actually started this, I want to say last October or last September so about a year is when I've been starting and asking my friends for just feedback it's just feedback on everything feeling more was supposed to be an intimate brand um, I was doing erotic paint parties with tipsy topics I uh, started selling erotic toys erotic massage oils erotic lotions things to turn you on and get you in a mood I said you know what I'm gonna make this myself because the ingredients on this stuff is not natural and I want all natural ingredients and I want to feel good about the stuff that I am presenting to people when they're coming to my event. So, Feel the More was born. All right, love you guys. Take care. Peace. Everybody come say bye because y'all apparently want to say bye and be up at, all up in my grill. Bye. Bye. All right. Mace is sleep.